Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here today. Um, it's uh, thank uh, the organizers for a kind invitation to participate in this conference. And uh, I sincerely hope that um, uh, the conference will have the successful outcomes as you expected. Uh, just uh, let me, uh, before I start, uh, I'm uh, Vladimir, as I said, uh, from WHO. And just before I uh, start with my presentation, which will focus on uh, health in uh, climate adaptation in WHO European region, I would like just to give you some brief about uh, organization where I come from. So uh, you can see here then uh, um, who is WHO. WHO is specialist agency and we perceive as um, international authority uh, uh, of the uh, international health within the United Nations system. It began uh, with uh, uh, when the, our constitution uh, uh, came in force on 7 of April in 1948, and that's why 7 uh, of April uh, we celebrate each year as a World Health Day. So we are around 7,000 people in 150 country offices, and we have the six regional office and WHO European regional office in is one of the six offices, and to be served to 53 member states. So it's more than European Union. It it is European Union member state, Southeast Europe, former Soviet countries, plus Turkey, plus Israel, and with 900 million in. So the, our main uh, areas of work are uh, communicable, non-communicable diseases, health system, and uh, promotion, and emergencies. So our key functions are to providing the leadership uh, on matters critical to health, shaping the research agenda, setting norms and standards. I will just name some of them where my office in Bonn participate is WHO air guidelines, WHO uh, drinking water guidelines, and the recently uh, en 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 endorsed um, noise guidelines uh, from last year. Then we are articulating ethical and evidence-based policy options, providing technical support to countries, and monitoring the health situation and assessing health trends. Uh, this is the, our uh, office in Bonn. It's located on the 17th floor in the UN building uh, we have here. And uh, for some of you who are involved in UNFCCC uh, negotiation, uh, uh, the majority of uh, this building and the new one is with staff uh, of the Secretariat of the UN F, uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, which are based in Bonn. Um, so we have three uh, big technical programs, living and working environment, water and climate, and environment and health and impact assessment with different topics uh, which we cover. But we uh, um, consider a state-of-the-art uh, uh, center for environmental determinant of health. And only we deal in the whole WHO European region. Um, now I can switch to, 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 to my presentation and I will start uh, something which uh, we are face uh, uh, daily because uh, the, the weather condition uh, began uh, uh, more influential to our daily activities and affected our daily life and well-being. So we, uh, we are fully aware that um, uh, we usually uh, start uh, our day with uh, looking at our uh, uh, mobiles with the, uh, the condition and uh, depend on this, we will then plan for our uh, daily activities. I just extracted some of the uh, news uh, we face in the last three years about the extreme weather events in Europe. And as you see, I can start probably with the latest one, the European heat wave. Um, where, where um, many countries uh, were uh, affected, uh, like uh, in Western uh, part of the Europe, like uh, France, uh, Germany, Luxembourg, um, uh, Italy, um, and uh, Belgium as well. 
um, where the, in June and July the absolute records, and this is the hottest month ever recorded in, in the history, um, are um, uh, create a lot of uh, problems to people as well. For example, in Germany, 42 degrees were measured. Uh, and we are not Italy, we are not uh, uh, Greece, but uh, in France it was um, uh, 46. Uh, we are, of course, another problem are the, 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 the cold extreme, uh, then uh, floods. Uh, here I put uh, some photos for the recent flood in uh, Venice. And um, of course, this is something which uh, uh, make us to, to, to see the, the relevance of these weather events and climate variability, but in connection with climate change. Because WMO uh, in uh, this July uh, said that uh, mostly of these uh, heat waves are uh, due to, to, to climate, most probably uh, they are uh, due to climate uh, change. So we in the climate change era. So we uh, already observe a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, impacts. But um, also the signals about what humans uh, did to the, uh, uh, have done to the environment uh, has uh, becoming increasingly shrill these uh, times. So, and that's why this climate change breaking records globally and also in Europe. Um, in this um, figure, you can see the global temperature and European land temperature, how it's increased. And uh, the last year, as we are faced uh, with uh, many years where they broke the records, and definitely uh, 2019 will be one uh, of them. Also, uh, from the 1950s, each de decade is hotter than the previous one. And um, the small switch in the, the average uh, create a big uh, um, uh, discrepancies in the occurrence of the extreme weather. So it's matter. It's matter to health. It's matter to, to the planet. It's one of the tipping points. And I just take uh, because of the timing, because just uh, uh, global warming uh, information. This can be discussed. Uh, we uh, see the same. Uh, changes in the sea level rise, in the melting of the ice, but, uh, and as I said, it can be uh, our, definitely our uh, takeoff message. We live in the climate change era. And if I start to talk about health, I have to talk about the big picture. And the big picture is because there are many compelling reasons why we need to clean our uh, polluted environment. One of the most pressing is that uh, polluted environment, in fact, uh, is deadly one. So 12.6 million deaths occur annually globally from environmental determinants due to uh, 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 air pollution, due to water uh, 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 pollution and uh, food pollution, there are a lot of chemicals, radiation. Definitely air pollution is top one uh, uh, risk factor. But all of them, all activities we intend to, to, to implement is, uh, can be jeopardized because of uh, climate change impacts, because this is uh, one which will, will have, uh, in coming years, will amplify all others' uh, existing uh, problems. Uh, it, it will affect air, air quality, will affect uh, our drinking water sources, it will affect definitely also our food production. And uh, it is one four of deaths. So one four of all deaths globally is due to environmental uh, risk factors. We are lucky in Europe. It is one fifth of the of all deaths are connected uh, uh, with the environmental risk, and the vast majority is due to uh, cardiovascular diseases. So uh, there are many. Uh, different uh, figures uh, where you can uh, see how the climate change impacts uh, impact uh, the health. And uh, this is one we adopt and publish in our uh, um, systematic literature review update uh, uh, in the health in Europe, um, which our office published in 2017. So uh, 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 climate and weather affects 
definitely, as I said, the, 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 the uh, air people uh, breath, the, the, the uh, water they drink, the, the, the food they, they eat, and they, uh, uh, climate change affects our health and well-being in um, uh, both directly via physical impacts and indirectly uh, with flow of, of economic and social uh, uh, changes. So there are a lot of possibilities to interact, to adapt ourselves, and there, there are possibilities to, 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 um, to tackle, in fact, these, uh, these impacts. And this is the, the sum of the role of WHO, this is the role of Ministry of Health, together with all other agencies and sectors uh, who deal, uh, because health, it's not belong only to health system, it's joint responsibility. Uh, just let me to play something. This is the circle size proportional to greenhouse gas emission uh, in tons published in the last IPCC uh, report. So according to United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, there are five sectors who contribute to the, the uh, greenhouse gas emission. And this is the energy transfer building industry and agriculture. And Let's ask to play and put, for example, to connect this 12.6 debt with these sources. And according to, to, to the projection, uh, the, this uh, changing uh, and projection uh, by 2050, the total greenhouse gas emission will be doubled in, 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 uh, um, in the Earth, in, the, our, in our planet. So the question is, should we allow to have 24 million deaths or we have to take action now? And definitely WHO will, will try to do, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to put very high on its agenda and we did it uh, together with our uh, ministers of health as our national con uh, partners uh, to find the mechanism and to, to, to see how it will uh, 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 not to allow uh, this to happen. Um, and we are today, 2020, I extract uh, uh, some uh, indicators from the last Lancet tracking, uh, countdown tracking progress on uh, climate change, which was published last, last week. So, and they're connected on adaptation, but with relevance to, the, to Europe. So then more and more uh, uh, vulnerable people were, uh, uh, who are subject uh, to a heat wave, uh, in 2018, then uh, 2002 climatological baseline, um, and it's higher than ever previously tracked. And because of June and July um, heat waves, uh, 31 million additional exposure were registered in European Union. Also, there are a lot of billion of hours of work where well, they, they lost in productivity due to extreme weather events. And Europe and South Europe in particular will be, be, be affected because the, um, uh, the most vulnerable people are elderly who live in the cities and uh, we have a high percentage of them in our European cities. And uh, the data from this report uh, for, for all major crops show that increase in temperature have reduced the global crop yield potential. And of course, uh, related to infectious diseases, I put here the information from this report regarding the Vibrio uh, distribution in Baltic, uh, because now there are more and more uh, hot days who will affect the surface temperature and possibilities of uh, development of Vibrio in uh, Baltic countries. And we are 2020. And um, I will just highlight very, uh, the most deadliest uh, extreme weather event and the most common one in our European region. The heat waves are the most deadliest uh, uh, extreme weather events. Uh, we have uh, uh, registered two mega heat waves, one in 2003 when more than uh, 71,000 excess deaths were registered in Western countries. And in um, 2010, it was uh, 55,000 uh, excess deaths registered in Eastern countries, in particular <laughs> Russia and Moscow, because due to synergy of uh, uh, recorded uh, absolute temperatures in a uh, uh, large area of Moscow plus uh, wildfires, which are affected. And this synergy between the air pollution and heat create this result. 
And of course, we always uh, would like to inform our decision makers, policy, uh, 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 and uh, policy makers about the, the, the potential of no action. So uh, if there are no adaptation in the whole region, there will be around more uh, around 100 uh, thousand deaths per year, or even 2050, it's the worst scenario uh, is uh, applied because each of these scenarios has the equal chance um, uh, uh, for this. There will be 255,000 uh, deaths. But with 50% uh, of adaptation, that means uh, implementation of some ex uh, heat health action plans, for example, of early warnings, it can, uh, uh, because most of these diseases are preventable, definitely there will be a lot of uh, uh, healthy prevention and achievement. And the floods are the most common uh, extreme weather event. In our European region in the last 30 years, 10 million were affected. With, uh, we registered around 2,000 direct uh, deaths. And here we, we are not talking about the mental uh, issue, just uh, to have, uh, and uh, uh, the economic loss were around 95 uh, billion uh, euros. So really something which is matter. And uh, the problem is that there are no good news. So we registered the exceptionally warm days uh, in the last uh, uh, 50 years uh, in the whole region uh, of Europe. But uh, on your uh, left-hand uh, uh, side, you can see the, the observe. Uh, uh, and on your right-hand side, you can see the projected uh, increase of the uh, heat waves. The, uh, if the worst scenario, business is usual, applied. That means there will be more frequent uh, heat waves, uh, more intensive, and they will last longer. The same for heavy uh, precipitation event, uh, uh, which increased uh, substantially in the last years, and further increase in heavy daily precipitation are projected in particular in winter. Uh, and uh, droughts are very um, a frequent phenomenon in south part of Europe, but not uh, only there. So, so you can see the frequency and severity in the last uh, 50 years, and they are also expected uh, to be more frequent. I would like to put your attention of the examples of vector-borne diseases in our region. Of course, the uh, mosquito-borne uh, like uh, dengue, chikungunya. Uh, thankfully, we are a malaria-free region, but uh, due to climate change, it can jeopardize the achievements we did uh, in Central Asian countries in the last few years. We are faced with West Nile fever, and the Zika was with questioner uh, until uh, two weeks ago when I, have, uh, I used this slide in presentation in Sofia. But now it's without uh, questioner because uh, WHO, ECDC confirm, and France, of course, that the, the uh, autotonic cases of Zika just uh, uh, a week ago, uh, which happened in South France. And uh, the important thing is because uh, Aedes aegypti is uh, the vector for Zika, but in this case, the Aedes albopicus has this potential to make it uh, happen. So this is another important uh, issue, even th uh, still the risk for these diseases is very low in European context, but it's uh, of a big uh, health concern. And the countries need to, to, to uh, be prepared. So because uh, we have the mosquito species like Aedes aegypti, which uh, uh, that are re-emerging, and Aedes albopicus is emerging, and we have the Aedes albopicus in Germany, we have in France, we have in, in the Netherlands. So. Uh, this is something which we expect that can be. And if we go to, uh, to, to scale down from global to European context, in, you can see that everybody will affect it, not with the same intensity, but, um, uh, and of course the country has different adaptive capacity, and uh, probably, uh, and I'm sure that, that uh, uh, Ireland is one of the countries with high level of adaptive capacity, um, but uh, uh, we should be aware for, for the uh, these incoming uh, um, uh, years. Uh, so this is uh, uh, extrapolation from, from uh, the, the IPCC report. 
And you see that in Northern and Western Europe, they are, will be observed and projected hot days increase, then uh, projected uh, increase in precipitation, then uh, extension in seasonal activity of uh, pest and plant diseases, and the vector from south can, can move uh, uh, for diseases. But then we scale down to the cities because cities are engines of the economy grown and uh, they, they are uh, responsible for 85% of global G GDP in 2015, but also on around 70, uh, rank between 71 and 76 of global energy related greenhouse gas emission. So when we create any policy, we have to, to start from a uh, bottom up approach. So cities are very important in this. Um, uh, setting. And I just extract uh, one of the tables from the Ramses project where WHO participate, where our colleagues uh, um, uh, did uh, um, analysis of uh, how the uh, climate change will affect the, the cities in the European Union. And you see that for the worst projection, the increase in all hazard for most European cities can apply, and flooding doubling is unfortunately uh, among the, the five uh, top um, affected cities. So the heat waves are uh, projected for south is part, but also Stockholm is there, and droughts definitely will, will uh, affect the south is part of, of Europe. And now I'm, I will. Uh, it was uh, what is the problem, and now we can switch to how to, to deal with. So definitely some of the takeoff message from my uh, presentation is that climate change is a global problem and a common, common concern to mankind, that the greenhouse gas emissions contribute to climate change irrespective of their origin, and that all countries will be affected if no action is uh, taken. So that's a need for a global approach to climate change and a global agreement is needed. So that's why the United Nations Framework uh, Convention of Climate Change is this instrument, which aims to stabilization of greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere at the level that will prevent dangerous anthropogenetic interference with the climate system. Uh, at, um, the ratification was uh, in 1990, uh, uh, for, uh, in 1994, and uh, this is now the legal, the legal binding instrument for all 195 uh, uh, parties of this uh, convention. And uh, according to this convention, there are two broad responses. Uh, this is the mitigation. Uh, in this community, it means action taken to cut net emission of greenhouse gases to reduce climate change and to preserve and enhance uh, GHG sinks and the reservoirs and adaptation, the actions taken to help cope with changing climate conditions and impacts, which is very familiar to, to the health system because we have primary prevention on, on this. So, and one of the several ongoing track of the convention is Paris Agreement. So there are several others, but Paris Agreement is one of the biggest achievement of, of uh, uh, this generation of, uh, um, because uh, it sets uh, ambitions limits to warming, um, aim for 1.5 degrees and less than 2 point deg degrees. Uh, unfortunately, it's almost impossible to achieve because, as you see, we are now in the one degrees and we are 2090, and Canada is three degrees, our Arctic is two degrees up to this level. So, so we have to, 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 to take a lot of action now or in the coming uh, uh, decade. Uh, it's obliged countries to make national determined contribution or to, to make uh, the commitments to cut the greenhouse gas emission. And the European Union is a lead in this process. And also commits to mobilize 100 billion per year in climate financing. And they, it's developed the Green Climate Fund, which is based in Seoul, in Korea, which help uh, countries uh, which are on the first line, uh, predominantly the small island development states, but also countries in Africa and Asia to develop the adaptive and mitigated uh, and to mitigate the, 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 the result. But 
2015, where it was in force, it's very important for, again, for, for, for this generation and the, uh, for the huma humanity itself, because it is the year where two additional big uh, um, policies were endorsed in the UN. Uh, first, it was the Sendai disaster risk reduction uh, strategy, and second one, maybe the, 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 the core uh, uh, product uh, was uh, Agenda 2030 on sustainable development goals. And it's very important to highlight that implementation of SDG 13 is implementation of the Paris Agreement, just to minimize the duplication of efforts and optimize the finite result. For us, this is a health uh, um, uh, treaty because it uh, recognizes the, the right to health. And uh, we perceive the, this uh, Paris Agreement as a public health agreement. And uh, within the, the SDG, uh, the, the whole SDG uh, um, uh, uh, process uh, in WHO, we, perceive, we, we see the health and well being there, that are an outcome, a determinant, and an a neighbor of all goals, and that's why it's very important to work with all others to, to, to include in the processes. But the progress of all of this will be uh, undermined if the world is not succeeding as DG13. So that's why it's important uh, to, 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 to see and uh, make a lot of activities. We in WHO support the whole process itself, starting year before uh, Paris, uh, when the first conference of health and climate uh, uh, was organized in Geneva. Uh, it was about informing and empowering the health sector to engage on climate change. Then, year after uh, the Paris Agreement in Paris, we organized the second conference about the mobilizing the health community behind a common global action agenda. And last year, uh, th there was uh, several meetings in different uh, ocean regarding the developing connection plan on climate change and health in the small island development states. And they succeed this year, the whole health assembly endorsed this action plan. So we have a uh, triple goal in the next five years. We have very ambitions in WHO. We intend uh, to have a healthy population with one billion more people who are enjoying better health and well-being, one million more people better protected from health emergency, and one billion more people um, benefiting from universal health coverage. And also this uh, uh, may, the, the global strategy of health, environment, and climate change was endorsed by World Health Assembly, which will trigger and support this general program of work, these triple goals in the environment and health determinant. So last year, the, the global warming on 1.5 degrees Celsius was published by this uh, intergovernmental panel of climate change, and simultaneously, we digest, WHO with the partners, digest the, the, this report and uh, with focus on the 1.5 health report, and I will share with you just the three main messages. The first is that the greater the warming, the greater the risk to health overall. Um, the second message is that there can be important health gains from the action that will be necessary to limit warming. And the third final message is that the speed of reduction emission will affect the level of adaptation <coughs> ambition required. So the longer it takes to reduce the emission, the greater the adaptation need to protect population health. And in my presentation, I'm focused only on adaptation because mitigation is also very important. It is something which is part of our activities, but due to timing and due to, to, to interest uh, of the organizers, uh, that's why the mitigation part is not present here. And WHO, imagine, after 24 years in work of UNFCCC convention, for a first time present the report on health on the request of the countries. So, our role is uh, this convention was negligible. I can say even these days we have to, to argue with our UN, in our UN family, but also with the member states 
to, 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 that the health argument should be triggered for the climate change negotiation. Because there are a lot we can present, there are a lot countries can, can present, and that's why the synergy between the health and the environment or economy or who, who is drive the UNFCCC uh, negotiation in, in the country is essential. So this is my first uh, play to you to, to, to engage uh, your forces and try uh, the help to be more visible in this because um, uh, it prov uh, we tried uh, uh, with this to synthesize the uh, global knowledge and provide an overview of uh, activities. Um, simultaneously in COP24, European Commission and WHO uh, had a uh, joint event where we present our public health and climate change adaptation policies in the European Union, and I will give you more brief in the coming slides. And to be also launch our um, tool to achieve the health benefits from carbon reduction, the manual and tool, how the countries can estimate the health benefits of implementation of the intended national determinant contribution. Um, it's another process where UNFCCC and WHO work together on monitoring on progress on health and climate change profiles. Um, we had um, four in our region. It was UK, France, uh, Germany, and Italy. And in the uh, survey in 2080, another 20 countries joined uh, to this group of people. It systematically tracked the progress in health resulting from climate change mitigation and adaptation. It's one kind of inventory. And I will also... Um, uh, uh, another place that in the next uh, survey I will invite uh, uh, Iceland to participate in this survey and be part of this big uh, more than 100 uh, inventory of, uh, of uh, the profiles. Um, very important political because we have uh, UN and political uh, organization as well. So we have our specific uh, environment and health process in, in, in Europe. It started 30 years ago with the uh, Frankfurt Conference, and uh, the last was in Austria. But you see that uh, since 1989, the climate change uh, problem was recognized. In London, 1999, uh, there was uh, talks about the early human health effects. In Budapest, after 2003, WHO was invited to develop the guideline for heat health action plans. We did it in 2008 for our region, but it has global relevance. And then we have the commitment to act in Parma. We still have some unfinished businesses, but the last conference was in Ostrava, uh, 2017, where the ministers of health talked together and agreed to have the, the, uh, the seven priority uh, areas uh, and um, according to the Austria declaration of the meeting uh, which uh, held in, uh, in Austria in, in Czechia in 2017, they are improved indoor and outdoor air quality, ensure access to safe drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene, minimize the adverse effects of chemicals, strengthening adaptation to and mitigation to climate change, then on the contaminated side, that uh, the regions and cities, and build the environmental sustainability of health system. Very important, very connected uh, priorities. So the country uh, will develop, or they already develop, the national portfolio of action on environment and health by the end of 2019, and on 9th and 10th December, we'll have the Environment Health Task Force meeting in Bonn. Uh, regarding the climate change the priority, we have the overall objective on strengthening adaptive capacity and resilience to climate change related health risks and support measures to mitigate climate change and achieve health benefits in line with the Paris Agreement. Uh, within this process, we established a political group on health in climate change, where more than 35 countries um, are, uh, are there. We have partners like European Commission, UN, uh, international UN agency, uh, NGOs, and uh, the last HIC meeting uh, uh, was organized in Bonn in September 2019 with more than 60 participants and representatives 
of 29 member states and thank to Jonathan who participate on behalf of um, EPA and Ireland and uh, I think that you have a nice time <laughs> in, in Bonn as I have here in, in, in Dublin. Um, this is important um, group of people who share their knowledge, who discuss about the problem, about they share about good practices, about bad practices, and this is the fora where they can uh, uh, we can bridge the gaps. And this is the role of WHO, in fact. Uh, and as I promise, very briefly, I'm not sure about the timing. Uh, Okay, so I will just, uh, yes, in five minutes it's sufficient. Uh, I will just uh, like to, um, to um, inform you about uh, the, this um, report uh, um, based on the joint project with European Commission of uh, Assess Progress in Tackling Health Risks from Climate Change. Uh, in EU member states, uh, we sent the questionnaire to all 28 member states. We received the response from 20. Then we made a desk review of the last uh, submitted uh, national uh, contribution to UNFCCC in 2018. And uh, um, the second objective of this project was to compile a compendium of good practice cases uh, from EU countries uh, featuring samples of adaptation to climate change in the health sector. So, as I said, from these 20 member states, uh, we, we, in this uh, uh, figure, I can uh, say that the government mechanism, uh, strengthening public health capacity in health system and health vulnerability and impact assessment are well developed. Uh, most of the country uh, did the health vulnerability and impact assessment. Almost all countries have the government uh, mechanism where the health is present in the climate change negotiation. But still the level of uh, uh, awareness of relevance on health effects in the health sector uh, is not, uh, it's only 65% uh, of the uh, responding country. And and also 65 uh, countries said that they, they, they have approved national climate change health adaptation policy or they're in the process of approval. Um, so uh, this is something, uh, uh, this uh, publication, this report is available uh, in, our, uh, uh, in uh, WHO uh, website. So I will, uh, if you're interested, you can download uh, and um, see the, 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 in details the responses from the countries. But also I will uh, uh, um, recommend to you to see the good practices in health adaptation from uh, five major areas on heat health action planning and implementation, where Austria, Belgium, Croatia, uh, Germany, Lithuania, Slovenia, and Sweden send their case studies. Then on UV radiation and sun protection, which is indirectly, not directly, in climate change, but because of the, the more heat waves, uh, the possibilities of UV radiation, in particular in northern country, will increase the risk for the humans. Then on surveillance, on, um, uh, strengthening the surveillance on vector and other infectious diseases, the uh, case studies from Belgium and Germany, building capacity of doctors from Germany, case study and communication and coordination from Italy and Sweden. Uh, the conclusion from this report can be summarized in several uh, points. The health sector is responsible for protecting health for climate risks, but other sectorial policy too. So, there should be synergism in, in the acting because there are many uh, limited human capacity everywhere. So, so that's why we should work together. Uh, the health sector needs to engage in the sectorial governments uh, and development of sectorial policies by providing public health argument. The countries, region, and cities to develop plans to build resilience and adaptive to climate change, taking population health into account, impact assessment in relation to the effectiveness of adaptation measure. Comprehensive approach should be adopted. The capacity of health workforce should be developed to address climate health risks and finance for health system resilience to climate change should be scaled up. This was as part of update of the EU adaptation policy, you know, 
from 2030, there was a process of updating of this policy, but the decision will be uh, come for the new uh, European Parliament uh, in 2020. And we, this report is part of this bigger portfolio. Also, WHO support the work of Board of uh, Advisory, who developed the opinion to the European Parliament on, on climate change and health. So we participate in their last two, uh, two uh, meetings. And uh, European Commission is definitely our, our main partner uh, in, in communication together with ECDC, EEA, and um, we, we try to, to, to work all together. So instead of a takeoff message, uh, I will just uh, uh, um, plead for, for something else, for advocacy. So I will ask you to, to think about future generation uh, because probably 1.5 uh, report was last call from science to politician to take an action. We need to take action now because we would like to achieve the sustainable development, but it go hand by hand with the achievement in climate change uh, um, action uh, to decrease, to, to look for, for two uh, world decrease. Thank you very much and uh, probably I will have opportunity to, to uh, uh, reply to your questions later on. Thank you.